Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue talking about limits. There are um, a few problems which are actually mini theorems, but I presented it as problems, um, which I would like to talk about today. Quite important, actually, problems, because um, there are certain aspects of other um, areas of mathematics, like geometry, for instance, where we are measuring lengths and areas, they do depend on these theorems. So I will definitely be referring to these particular theorems when I will talk about the, those geometrical properties. All right, so first of all, I would like to expand the concept of minimum and maximum towards infinite uh, sequences. Now, um, obviously, if you have a finite sequence, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, you know that this particular finite sequence has the maximum element, which is 4, and minimum element, which is 1. Now, what if my sequence is infinite? So instead of this, I will use the following sequence. One half, two thirds, three quarters, etc., and over n plus one, etc. Now Minimum, actually, we can talk about one half. Now, then our elements are increasing, obviously. And, um, well, how about the maximum? It's infinite. It's infinitely increasing. Well, at the same time, you might actually notice that it's getting closer and closer to number one. Um, I can't really name number one as, as a maximum of this particular uh, sequence. Why? Because it's not a member of this sequence. We can't really talk about maximum um, for something which is not an element of this particular set. So, to expand the concept of maximum and minimum, uh, mathematicians have come up with some other um, well, terminology, if you wish, and that's what I would like to to introduce right now. It's a brand, it's a brand new concept. Here it is. First of all, we will introduce the concept of upper bound for a sequence. Upper bound. Now, what is upper bound for a sequence of? And, well, it's basically any number A which is greater than or equal to all the members of this particular sequence. If this is for all N, so if this number A is greater or equal to any element of our sequence, then A, A is called an upper bound. Well, that's natural, right? Now, are there sequences which do not have upper bounds? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., up to infinity. There is no upper bound. All right. Because whenever we choose any particular number A, there will be some kind of a member of this sequence which is greater. Okay. Now, obviously, in exactly the same fashion, we can introduce lower bound. Now, this is a number A, which is less than or equal to N, uh, to AN for O N. So, if there is a such a number which is less than or equal to any element of our sequence, it's called lower bound. Again, this is quite obvious, and uh, there are obviously certain examples of sequences which do not have lower bound, like for instance, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. It goes to minus infinity, which means no matter how um, we choose the number, 
uh, as a potential lower bound, there will be some elements um, of the sequence which are, which are less than this particular number. So these two concepts have absolutely no problems. Either they exist, these bounds, upper or lower, or they don't exist, but if they do exist, it's obvious what it is. But here is the very important axiom, which um, is attributed to a famous mathematician, Dedekind. The axiom of completeness. What it says is the following. If a sequence has an upper bound, it has the least upper bound. Now, what is the least upper bound? And similarly, the greatest lower bound. Now, what are these? Well, the least upper bound, first of all, is an upper bound, which is, this is a number which is greater than or equal to all elements of our sequence. At the same time, any other upper bound for the same sequence would be greater than or equal to our low, uh, least upper bound. So, this is actually the minimum, if you wish, of all the different upper bounds. Um, in any case, similarly, if A is the greatest lower bound, not only this is, sorry, it's different. Not only this is um, a lower bound, but it's also greater, it's the greatest, right? So it's greater than any other um, lower bound. So these are correspondingly the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound. So the axiom of completeness states that if there is an upper bound for a sequence, then there is a least upper bound. So there is a concrete number, concrete real number, we're talking about real numbers only right now, uh, which, which is not only the upper bound, but also the least upper bound. And same, similar with, with the greatest. Now, the first one is called supremum, and the second one is called infinitum. Supremum, infinitum. So these are uh, mathematical terms for least upper bound and greatest upper, uh, lower bound. So, these are concepts which are expanding the concepts of maximum and minimum. Two words, infinite sets. If the finite uh, set is given, the finite sequence of elements, then obviously its maximum and supremum are exactly the same. And similarly, its infinitum and minimum are, are the same. But if we are talking about infinite uh, sequences, they might not or might might or might not be bounded. And if there are, uh, if they are bounded, then uh, if it's bounded from above, if there is an upper bound, then we can talk about supremum, which is the least uh, upper boundary, and similarly for infinitum. Okay, now why did I introduce this particular, these particular topics? Well, there is a very important theorem uh, in the theory of limits, and this particular theorem is actually dealing with uh, supremum and, and infinitum of uh, infinite sequences. So under certain circumstances, certain sequences do have the limit and I'm going to basically prove that this particular theorem. Okay, and this is my first problem 
uh, which I wanted to present today. So whatever I said before is it, just some kind of a, um, explanation of what exactly the problem is all about, and it will be obvious how to solve the problem using these two new concepts, supremum and infinitum. Okay, here is the problem. Consider you have a sequence such that uh, it's always increasing. So every next element is greater or equal than the previous one. So, for instance, if you put it on uh, on the axis of all the numbers, then this is your a1, this is your a2, this is your a3, etc. a n minus 1, a n, etc. So, all the points are directed towards increasing um, numbers. Now, let's also assume that everything uh, is uh, bounded from above. So all members for all n. This is true. So not only we have the sequence which goes to the right, but also there is a bound. There is a boundary which they do not exceed. So they are moving to the right, but there is a wall here. Now, this type of um, sequence is called monotonic or monotonous, monotonously or monotonically increasing in this particular case, because obviously there is a decreasing to the opposite side. So the theory which I would like to prove, and this is my first problem actually in this particular lecture, is that monotonically increasing sequence bounded from above has the limit. It's actually very important uh, because this particular theorem will be used in some very important cases. Um, so let's just think about how to prove it. It's not difficult. I mean, it's a lot of different explanations of the concept, etc., concepts, etc., but First of all, intuitively, it's obvious, right? So if you're moving towards the wall, infinite number of steps, you never go across that wall, but you're always moving towards it. There should be something which you are converging to, right? Now, so what exactly are you converging to? Well, my statement is that the limit of this particular sequence, when n goes to infinity, is equal to its supremum. use capital letters, supremum of a n. So, this is the least upper uh, bound for this particular set. First of all, it exists supremum because of the axiom uh, of completeness uh, for real numbers. So, uh, the, the sequence is bounded from above. And the axiom says that if it's bounded, there is a least bound, upper bound in this particular case. So this thing does exist. Now I'm going to prove that this particular number, supremum of this sequence, which does exist according to an axiom which we have accepted, uh, from this we, we can prove that this particular supremum is the limit of this sequence. Now, how can we do it? All right, actually, it's not very difficult. Let's think about this. Um, well, for obvious reasons, uh, the, the limit cannot be something which is above this boundary, because everything is on the left side. And uh, if you put the limit on the right side, considering the sequence will be uh, infinitely close to this limit, it will be definitely above the boundary. But that's kind of an obvious. I'm talking about intuitive uh, understanding of this. Also, again, intuitively, if the, if the limit is somewhere on a, this side, and again, considering the sequence would be um, infinitely close to this particular limit, then most likely there will be 
this is not the, the, the least upper limit. Something like this would also be an upper limit. So that's how we will plan, that, that's how I plan to, to prove that this is the limit of this particular sequence, because it cannot be on the left, cannot be on the right, etc. All right, so let's do it uh, from a more rigorous standpoint. How can I prove that this is a limit of this? Well, naturally, let's choose any uh, distance g greater than 0, and uh, let's find the number n such that if n greater than capital N, then the distance between, let's call it uh, A, then the distance between A and A n uh, less than D. So basically that's what we have to do. So we choose any number D, which is the distance. Now we have to find the number after which this is closer, the elements would be closer to this particular uh, number of energy. All right. Let's assume that there is no such number. That whenever we choose a number, it will not actually satisfy this particular thing. First of all, let's use the fact that our sequence is monotonous. If there is one particular number n after which this is true, then all other numbers which are exceeding this would be definitely true because we are moving towards uh, towards the right side of this uh, 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 on this axis, right? Which means every time uh, a n plus first, a n plus second, etc., will be even closer to that particular uh, least upper limit supremum than the previous one. So. We actually have to find just one. We don't have to find the number n after which all the numbers, all the elements, would be uh, would satisfy this particular inequality. It's enough if we, if we will find just one. So if we will find one, then this particular uh, inequality will be definitely true for all subsequent ones because we are increasing and we are moving towards A without, obviously, overlapping because it's a bounder, it's an upper bounder, right? So, how can we prove that there is such a number N which satisfies this? Well, let's assume that there is no such number which means that all, uh, uh, all elements, whatever, whatever number we choose all elements are further from the A than D. So if this is A and this is D, all elements, if they are further from A than D, what does it mean? It means that any number between A and A minus D would also be the upper boundary, and which, which contradicts the fact that A is the least upper boundary. So we are actually using two things, the monotonous, monotonousness of our sequence, and that's why we really have to find just one number n for, n for any d. We don't have to worry about the subsequent one. And then we were using the fact that a is the least upper limit, because if we consider that there is no such number n, if this is not true, if the distance is greater than d, then obviously there is another upper limit which is less than the one which we have claimed to be the least. So, absolutely symmetrical proof uh, can, be, um, can be made for an opposite case when sequence is decreasing and um, it's limited from below, then it has a limit and the limit is infinite. I don't want to do it um, right now. Uh, the proof actually is presented uh, in, in the lecture's notes on unizor.com, so please refer to this to, to have a complete proof. So, this is just a purely logical 
uh, exercise of uh, what actually is uh, the upper limit, the least upper limit, and uh, how they are related to uh, limits of monotonic sequences. Now, what I will do next is I'll just use this for a couple of other uh, problems. So next problem is uh, related to series. Now let's consider the series. Now series is something, as you know, um, uh, formed from existing sequence by summing up uh, elements of uh, this particular sequence. First of all, we introduce nth sum, which is from n. Well, let me use different index here. Let's say i, where i equals 1 to n. So this is nth sum. So the first n elements of our sequence. Now, all sn's, all sn's form a sequence in its own right. So if this converges, then we say that the series converges to whatever the limit actually, the limit of this is. So our theorem is, if all members of this particular sequence are positive, and all partial sums are bounded from above, then the series converges, which means that all partial sums will go to certain limit. Now, how can I um, prove it using the previous theorem? Well, that's actually very simple. Because considering that all members of our sequence are positive, it actually means that Sn plus first is always greater or equal than Sn. Actually greater even. If this is greater or equal, then this is greater or equal. Because we are always adding something, right? What is Sn plus first? It's the sum of the first n plus first elements of our sequence, which is first n elements plus n plus first. And this is greater or equal than 0. So this is greater than or equal to Sn. So our partial sums represent the monotonic sequence. It's monotonously increasing in this particular case. And it's bounded from above, as we said. Actually, that's the condition of our theorem which means, from the previous theorem, it has a limit. That's the end of the proof. Very simple. So basically what we have done here, we concluded that from the positiveness of elements follows the monotonousness of the partial sums. And that's what was very important, actually, in this case. Okay, next. Next is not related to supremums or infimums. It's just about uh, limits in general. If you have two sequences which are converges to the same limit, then the sequence which constructed from their differences, the corresponding differences, so I subtract uh, members with the same number, converges to zero. Intuitively, it's obvious, right? So if you have one sequence go, go, goes to, the, to some limit and another goes to the same limit, the difference between them should go to zero, right? How can I prove it? Well, it's very easy, but you have to remember one very important thing, which I actually used before. Now, there is such an inequality, 
Actually, it's a kind of a triangle inequality. But it's obvious with numbers as well. If x and y are positive, then all the absolute value can be dropped, and it would be exactly equal. If x and y are both negative, then again, this would be just an opposite, and this would be just an opposite, and this would be just an opposite. It would be exactly equality. Like, for instance, minus 5 plus minus 3, it's minus 8. Absolute value is 8, right? And this is absolute value of minus 5 and absolute value of minus 3. This is 5 and this is 3, so it's equal, right? However, if the signs are different, then these guys will cancel, partially cancel each other, and these will always be adding together. So this is an obvious uh, inequality, and I will use it to prove that the a nth minus b nth are um, going to zero. Very simply. Look at this. It's less than or equal to a n minus l plus l minus b n. Right? I can add and subtract the same number, which is the limit. Which is, well, actually, in this case, it's equal. I don't have to put less than equal. Now, in this case, now I will consider this as my x and this is as my y. So I would put less than or equal sign now. A n minus L plus L minus B n. Now, L minus A n or A L minus L is the same thing because there is an absolute value here. And now, let's think about this. This is, as n goes to infinity, is very, very small and it goes to zero. And this one as well. So intuitively, we feel that, uh, that smallness of these two guarantees smallness of this one. Because this is greater than this. And obviously everything is positive. We're talking about absolute value. Now, how to rigorously prove it? Well, very simply. Again, um, let's just uh, choose any kind of a D, which is greater than 0, and find the number N such that this particular thing, a n minus b n, is less than g. All right? How can I do it? Now, since l is the limit for a n's, I can find number n1 such that if n greater than n1, it follows that a n minus L less than D over 2. Now, I can also find N2, because this is also limit for the N, right? Such that if N greater than N2, what follows is that B N minus L is less than D over 2, right? D is any number, right? So I can always find D over 2 and find uh, n1 from the convergence of this and n2 from the convergence of this. Now, if I will choose n equals maximum of n1 and n2, now, then both of these inequalities will be true. And that's exactly is a sufficient condition for their sum. This is less than d over 2, and this is over d over 2. So the sum would be d, and that's exactly what's necessary to, to prove here. All right? So obviously, as intuitively felt, the difference between two sequences converging to the same limit converges to 0. And another, which is very much like this, That's the next problem. Um, if you have two sequences which are converging to the same limit, and 
you have a third sequence which is in between these two. Now, what do you think happens with xn? Well, obviously, if an is going to this limit and bn go going to the same limit, and x and it is in between, there is no other way but also go to the same limit. So what I'm saying is that xn should go to the same limit. Now, how can I prove it? Again, choose d greater than 0. Now we have to find number n such as the difference between L minus Xn less than D for all N greater than capital N. Right? That's what we have to find. We have to find number N if, if we choose uh, D. Well, let's just do exactly the same thing. L minus Xn less than An minus Xn uh, plus L minus A N. And again, this is an equality so far. Right? I added and subtracted A N. Less than or equal to. Now I will use the same, I will uh, group it in two. So it will be A N minus X N plus L minus A N. Less than now, the difference between an and xn, between an and xn, is less than the difference between an and bn, right? So I can put bn minus an plus l minus an. Now, let's use the fact from the previous problem that bn minus an converges to zero. l minus an is also converges to zero since l is uh, the limit, right? So these are two very small uh, variables as n increasing to infinity. And that's what we're going to use in exactly the same fashion as before. Now, since bn minus an tends to zero, then I can always find for a d over 2, I can find number n1 such that bn minus an is less than d over 2 if n greater than n1. Similarly, for the same d over 2, I can find number n2 such that my difference between L and an less than d2 if n greater than n2. Exactly the same as in the previous problem. Now I will choose uh, uh, numbers, the number n, which is uh, maximum between n1 and n2. And for any lowercase n which exceeds this maximum, both will be true, and their sum would be less than g. g, g over 2 plus g over 2. So that concludes the proof. Okay, next one is, I've done this, I've done this, uh -huh. subsequence. All right, a, a new concept, very simple though, the concept of subsequence. Well, it's very similar to the concept of a subset. You have a set, and then you pick certain elements from that set, and they constitute subset. Same thing with the sequence. If you have some kind of a sequence, a1, A2, A3, An, etc. Subsequence is you just pick certain numbers. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, we, you, you pick uh, 10, 20, 25, etc. Some numbers, and 1, and 2, and 3, preserving the order. So here, 1, 2, 3 goes in increasing order, and so n1 should precede n2, should precede n3, etc. And this is your new sequence. This is b1, this is b2, this is b3, etc. Now, let's think about 
if this sequence is converges to something. Now, the, the problem, the next problem is to prove that the subsequence, any subsequence from this converging sequence, converges to the same limit. Well, it's kind of obvious. Let's just think about it. If this converges, it means that from any d distance from the limit, so limit is is L, right? Limit of this sequence. OK, so for any g, I can find some number n such that for all subsequent members, difference is less than g. That's the definition of L being a limit for a n, right? Now, what does it mean? It means that any number in this sequence, and 1, and 2, and 3, etc. So from some, from certain point, all these nk and ak plus 1, etc. would also be greater than n. So basically, I have to find out of these numbers, and, and 1, and 2, and 3, etc., the first one which is greater than this number n. And it's always possible, because the sequence is infinite, and this is the finite number, and that particular n case would be exactly the boundary after which all members of our subsequence uh, would be within the g distance from the uh, from the limit. Why? Because all corresponding members of the sequence are there, including picked up numbers from that tail, infinite tail, which is included into our sequence. So that's the last one which I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I do uh, recommend you to go through notes for this lecture at unizor.com and try to recreate all these proofs which I have just uh, um, provided, uh, or any other, whatever you decide. But anyway, it's very important, especially the very first uh, theorem about if the monotonic uh, sequence is bounded, uh, then it has a, a limit. If it's monotonically increasing and, the bound, and it's bound from above, it has a limit. Or if it's monotonically decreasing and is bound from below, it also has a limit. This logic is very important, and I, I do recommend you to go through it again and again. And obviously, as usual, I recommend to register as a, as a student, have somebody else, or yourself, if you're very disciplined, as your parent or supervisor um, registered and go through exams. Uh, very, very useful for you. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much.